Welcome everybody, this is Vaughn, and I wanna bring an awesome message to you today, one of hope, one that'll make you feel you can do this, you've got this, okay? Timing, it takes time. Can you tell I'm a dad? Dad pun intended, right? Like it takes time. And I wanna share a story from a lesson I just had with a student who I just could not stop high-fiving. I was so proud of them, right? I was so proud of the achievement they just had. And hopefully you experience this yourself and I, you know, it would be my hope, dream and wish that you do as well. And I'd like to just preface this by saying that my job, what I do, what I love to do is take people who don't know how to dance at all, who would consider themselves crap, a numpty, terrible, and then move them from that into the best dancing that they could ever do in their life. And it takes years to do this, okay? So this is like bonsai plant dance teaching, right? So this is something you just, you can't just get an instant tree. I love the saying, by the way, that just came to mind. When was the best time to plant a tree? 20 years ago. And when's the second best time? Now, right? So we always look back and go, oh, I wish I did this earlier, I wish I did that. But we can't live like that, you know? So this student came in yesterday and I hadn't seen them for a few weeks. They came in and I said, all right, we're gonna go through all your dances, just one after the other, bang, bang, bang to music. And I wanna see how far you get through them. You know, and generally you'll find there's a point you stop, right? There's a point you stop and have to keep going uh, from and relearn or work out, uh, have a breakthrough with your coach to be like, how do we get past that point we keep stopping at? But every single dance, they went from their waltz, foxtrot, quick step. They did their new, three new Vogue dances, and then we, we had to finish there, so we didn't quite get through the Latin. But every dance, every step they did, they were bang on time, every step. Now, you, you gotta understand the, the implication of this. The, for the last couple of years, timing was non-existent. Like, in the brain of this male dancer was like, what, what is timing? Like, I, I can't even read a watch, right? Like, I don't know what timing is. And I was like, look, you may not remember this, but on your very first lesson with me, and it, for, for several lessons after that, I mentioned something very clearly to you. And I said, in dancing, it is a marathon, not a sprint. To understand how to develop the skills necessary to become a dancer, it takes a lot of time. You're gonna to wanna to rush the process. And for everyone, there's a different period of unfoldment. But timing takes time. Now I'm gonna ask you to count every time you dance. I'm gonna keep reinforcing timing. I'll get you to write down your routine and to learn your step names and to get the timing with your step names. But that doesn't mean you're gonna get it. It will take you a long time to understand how to get timing working. And I asked him at the end of this, this lesson, could you hear, did you have to think about your timing? And he said, no, like I could just pick it up as I was going. And I was like, oh, I could have hugged him. I was going to cry because this is a big deal, right? This is a big deal because it was automatic. It just clicked. Now, have you ever had that happen to you? And it may not be with timing, it might be just with steps, you know, connecting one step to another. There was a period where just that clicked for you, that, that opened up to you and you're like, oh my God, I can finally do this waltz, right? I can do this cha-cha, I can finally get that step to happen with my partner. It's a beautiful moment, right? But for me, the overarching thing is, is when you understand timing, because it, it, what I said was, all right, when you're learning to dance, what are you trying to do, right? When, when you have no idea how to dance, what is it you're trying to do? Well, you're trying to get a series of patterns. You get these series of patterns to have appropriate footwork, heels and toes. You're trying to get the appropriate foot positions, CBMP promenade, right? Understanding where you go, getting your hold right, get your posture correct. These are like the foundations, yeah? You're getting these to be the thing you focus on for the first few years. Of course, timing is instrumental in all of that. But if you fall off balance because you've got bad footwork, if you can't keep with your partner because you don't understand what your foot positions are, how are you gonna keep time, right? So timing is important, but it is actually governed by mastering other things as well, okay? So it's not like you should be just focusing only on timing. You have to understand there's a construct underneath timing on which uh, all these principles lay. And so in the beginning of all your dancing, you spend an awful amount of time repeating the same pattern, right? Like always again and again. And this is why basics matter, right? This is why boring mastery exists. Master your basics. Basics are not easy. Basics are not simple. Basics are not just one step. There's multiple things, right? But within that, you're building skills. And one of those skills that I was imparting to him was how to understand what governs timing. And this was like the core moment for him. It just went, he was so happy because <laughs> you could say this would be like one of the weakest things he would ever have in his arsenal was being able to hear music, be able to count to music, let alone be able to step to music on time. 
Now, was the rest of the dad scene good? Well, yeah, but it wasn't like, now we can develop it. So the second part of this message for you is to understand when you can sort of crack the code on timing and your feet are hitting the beat and your body weight is arriving correctly and you're not going off time and your routine's staying in sync with the music, that is the platform you can develop dancing from. This is, this is my estimation of it. This is what I've experienced as a dancer and this is what I've seen teaching people of varying different degrees. Now this gentleman is in his 60s, right? So he started to see, well, I think so. If he's watching, oh my God, please, I hope I don't get your age wrong, man. If, if so, maybe you gotta moisturize more. <laughs> but anyways, the thing is that platform, right? Once you start to get to that, you can launch off it. But if you can't get your footwork, if you can't get your timing, you can't get your posture, right? And you can't understand how those things work on an unconscious level, well, not understand how they work, but get them to be automatic and a habit, then how are you going to develop your swing, right? Like, yes, you can develop it a little bit, but not to its fullest extent. How are you going to develop your upper body rhythm, right? How are you gonna develop your other principles of dance that really make dancing so elegant and beautiful? And how on earth are you going to make leading and following actually click, right? Have you ever had that problem? Like leading and following a problem for you, right? You go, what, what is that? Leading and following? Yeah, he doesn't lead me well, right? It's like, fair enough, fair enough. And, and gentlemen, you, what's your answer to that? You've always gotta be like, well, you know, maybe she's not following. The real answer is you're not giving a lead worth following. Ha ha, it's always our fault, remember this, okay? <laughs> so the woke people won't like that one, right? But it's true, we have to take responsibility for leading and following. And then how do we do that? We control our body weight. We control our body weight through footwork, through foot positions, through timing, right? Through our uh, posture, right? And the posture is hold, frame, etc., and where the weight's going. So it sounds like a lot, but really there is a lot to dancing. And that's why I said it takes time. And you gotta think about the skills you're building. See, I would rather you build skills based off concepts in dancing than just have a routine that you repeat again and again and again. Because I've also experienced from dancers who have been in the game for 20 years or 30 years that they also stagnate, right? They don't get anywhere. They may plateau, and why? Well, a lot of the times is they're just doing routines. They're not actually going through and trying to build a skill set in the routine. Right, doesn't that make sense? It's like, why, why wouldn't you wanna learn a skill set in your dancing, right? Because a skill set carries over. A skill set is something your body inhibits and exhibits, right? It's unconscious, it's a habit, it's autonomous, right? It's, you don't have to think about it anymore. So why would you wanna to have to continually, uh, you know, every single time you do cha-cha, like have to think, uh, is it a ball or is it a heel, right? You know, and there are people that do this, right? There are people that will come through into dancing and they'll be like, ah, oh, do I use the ball on my foot? Or, you know, do when I go forward, do I turn my foot in? Or, uh, no, 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 I'll go turn out. Oh yeah, that's right. No, but it's more out or is it less? I don't know. So like, if you don't have that skill set being ground in from sort of the earliest day, it's really difficult to unpick that, right? It's really, really difficult. And you've got to want to do it, of course, to, um, to get better. And that's where I think the, the overarching idea of it takes time to get your timing, it is not only governed by these skills of dancing, you know, footwork, posture, timing coming together, it's also governed by your mindset, hence this video, your ability to not give up, your ability to keep going, even when you feel like a numpty, even when you feel like that baby giraffe still learning to walk, but you've been dancing for five years and you're like, oh my God, this is so frustrating. That's the game, right? It weeds people out. But I can promise you, if you always try to approach things with a bit of joy, a bit of enthusiasm, right? A bit of lightness to it, and not take it so damn like seriously all the time, right? Like I do this, okay, but, but there's a time when you just gotta relax and try to do that more than the other way around, okay? Because I see people take it too seriously, they don't have joy. How are you going to get the most out of yourself, right? What, you're gonna berate? berate yourself and beat yourself into good dancing? Maybe a little bit. You know, I do a coin of saying, earn your tears, and that's a lesson for another time, but that's not necessarily around just being harsh to yourself all the time, right? So listen, the message for today, it takes time to get timing, but once it clicks, it's yours forever. Nobody can take the skill away from you, all right? So don't focus so much on your patterns and routines so much as you are. Try to understand what is a skill that I'm actually developing here? And if you feel like, okay, I'm not on time, be a madman or a mad woman and drive around counting in the car all the time. Because one of the things I said to him, if I want to break down the overarching idea I said to him, I said in the beginning, it's gonna take you a few years before timing even clicks, but we're gonna persevere. So every time you dance, try to count. 
Unless you're doing a medal or a competition, don't count on the floor, but try to count out loud with your partner, right? Write your routines out. Write them down, put the timing next to them. Learn the figure names. Know when a figure starts and stops with the timing associated to it, right? That's, to me, that's a bare minimum if you wanna just be a good dancer socially, right? But if you wanna be a competitive dancer, forget it. You must do this, yeah? Okay, after that, you're practicing counting out loud. You know all your routines and where they're going. You then have to drive around or have music playing constantly so you can start to try and hear beats, try to pick up accents, try to figure out like, oh, the music crescendoed, then it went down. What is happening there, right? And listen to music because you have to be aware of the music because every time, no shit, for like years, I'd be like, could you hear anything then? Like when you were dancing, you were off time for like the whole thing. Could you hear a beat? It's like, there was music playing? I'm like, well, yeah, duh. Of course, because you're so in your head about the pattern, right? So that's what happens. We get too caught up on the steps. And fair enough, because in the beginning, that's what you're doing. Patterns, steps, footwork, right? But you still have to have this overarching idea that you're going with the timing too, right? You still have to think about that. But there's like this mystery space where some people just get it. And I would say it's a very small few. The rest of us earn it, right? We work for it. And you do it through this process. So write your routines down, count every time you dance, and then, and then let yourself obviously feel the music, but to me, that's, today is about skill acquisition. So that's a very conscious approach, okay? It's not an artistic approach, it's a very logical approach. But because I want you to get to a point that this gentleman got to, where things unlocked for him. All the timing worked across all the dancers. And he didn't have to think as hard about it. In fact, he didn't have to think about timing at all. It just landed. I was like, yes, now you can elevate to another level. It is so exciting, it's so wonderful when this happens, but please give yourself grace. It takes time, right? Literally, it takes time for the timing to land, okay? Oh, wait, Kylie, hello, Kylie. Had this conversation recently with my coach. Timing is, uh, timing is clicking, it's wonderful. Nothing feels too fast now. Yeah, what's up? I'm gonna pound that one out, bang. That's awesome, right? It's true. It's timing, it's clicking, it's what, and you know, Kylie, I love that. I, that is so great because how do we know each other? We know each other through online, right? Like you saw me on YouTube, you've been part of Board Mastery Academy, which, you know, that was about 18 months ago, two years ago, where you were sort of brand new to dance. So good on you for one, staying in the game. I really honor that. That's amazing, like good on you for staying with that because I know you had certain challenges, some emotional struggles, like holy shit, this is overwhelming. And then you jammed into my course. You're like, oh my God, there's a lot of content. There's like a hundred videos there. There's dance at home. Oh my God, there's like 500 there. So you've done so well, but notice the, 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 you, that's what two years for you, right? Notice how time is starting to click. And it's, it's something that you'll keep working on. Once you get timing, here's the thing for all of us to remember. Once you get timing, Timing is your gateway into musicality, right? Obviously, so if you could stay on time and in time with the music, you start to develop out how much time do you spend on a certain step or a figure or a movement, right? And that's where the differences start to appear. That's where you start to see the levels change, right? So you look at social dancing, it's like everyone's moving the same way in the waltz. You know what I mean? Like everyone's making similar mistakes. And then you start to look out and what separates that from people who, like myself, who've dedicated their life to learning ballroom dancing, who've dedicated to the artistry of dancing and still want to get better. And every day I feel like I'm getting better. What separates out is you're always trying to make movements adhere to principles of musicality and timing is core to that, right? But it's not just staying on time. So if you need some more help with that, go to my YouTube channel and look at the timing videos that I've put and the music videos I've put for Foxtrot and Waltz as an example, okay? They will really, really help, not just you, Kylie, but everyone in understanding why this is so important, okay? Now, it sounds obvious because every coach who's worth their salt will be like, you must stay on time, you must count to the music, you're off time. So it's a bit, it's a common issue, but what a lot of people don't understand is how to develop it, right? Like how to develop this skill set. Of, and treating it like a skill set of being on time because the majority of us can't do it to start with, right? So it is practice of what? The routine, writing it out, and then what are you gonna do next? Well, you decide on that. You decide how much you do it. Drive around like a crazy person. Drive around like a mad woman or something. Like I would do in the sandbar. I'd be in the car, I'd be like, five, six, seven, what's up? Hi, just in the car, just with people, just do my five, six, seven, eight, and they can't hear the music, so I just look like a weirdo, right? But I was there nailing my dancing. I had no idea if I was on or off time, but, it, but you know, over time, it started to land. Why? Because I had a lot of feedback. Allison would look at me like, you weirdo, you are off time again. 
Penny would be like, what are you doing, you donkey? You are off time again. I'd go to a comp and be like, I have no idea if I'm on time at all. <laughs> and so as I'm dancing around, you just, you learn the feedback. Why? Because I got my ass kicked at a comp. Be off time, judges, bang, they don't like that. You can't be off time. You only learn through those trials and error, okay? But eventually it lands and you start to go, oh yeah, I like this, I like this business. Okay, so remember, it takes time to be on time. It's been awesome to have you. Visit boremastery.tv. Boom, chicka, boom. Join me up here in Boremastery Access. Awesome to have you and I'll see you in the next lesson and episode.